Okay, we've extended our entity, we've added an extension method, we've got a relationship between our app user and our photo class. We call this type of relationship a one-to-many. One user can have many photos. And what we're going to do is see what Entity Framework gives us conventionally without us doing anything else. Now, if we take a look at our Data Context class, then we've got our DB set for our users. Now, do we need another DB set for our photo class? Well, we can add another DB set inside here for the photo, but let's think about what we're likely to be doing with the photos in our application. Now, a user can have many photos. We only want to add photos to an individual user's photo collection. We're not going to be getting photos independently of the photo collection, as in we don't need to go to our API specifically and go and get an individual photo. We only want our photos to be added to a user's photo collection. So for all of those reasons, we don't necessarily need a DB set in here for the photo class. But I do want the photo entity to be called photos in the database. So what we can do to ensure that is the case, we can give this a property or an attribute of table and we can specify photos as the table name. And then we just need to bring in system component model data annotations schema. And when Entity Framework creates this table, it's going to call it photos. So what we want to see here really is what does Entity Framework give us if we don't do anything at all? We've not added anything to the data context. We've added some properties to our user. So we can expect our migration to contain all of these additional properties for sure. But what does it do about our photos collection? Well, let's go and take a look. What we'll do is we'll just go into our API. We want to make sure that our API server is stopped before we do this. And what we'll do is we'll run .NET EF migrations, add, and we'll just say extended user entity, and press return. And the list worked without an issue. So let's go take a look at what this has actually created for us. And if we go to our data folder inside the migrations, then we can see our new migration inside there. And let's take a look at what we've got. Well, we've got all of our add column operations. That's fine. We would expect that because we've added additional properties to our app user entity. So we're adding some columns. And let's scroll down to what I consider to be interesting inside here. We've got a method to create a new table and its name is photos. It respects that attributes that we gave the photo entity. Inside our photos table, we have five columns, not four. We've got five columns here and we've got our ID, which is an auto increment field. A URL is main public ID and our app user ID. Now we don't have a user ID inside our photo entity, but Entity Framework has gone ahead and added this column because it recognizes that there is a relationship between our app user and the photo class. And what we have in our constraints here is it's creating a foreign key for us to the users table in our database. Our table for our app user is actually called users and it's given it the app user ID as its foreign key. Now, this is not quite what we're looking for though. Entity Framework will do a lot by convention, but sometimes we need to give it a bit more help. And what it's done in this case, it's allowing our app user ID to be nullable. That means we could have potentially a photo added to our database that has no association with a user. Now we don't want that because we don't have a way to go and get photos without a user. We're not going to be returning them that way. We want to return the photo collection along with our user object when we send it back, when somebody asks to see the user or a list of users. And what we've also got here is the on delete behavior. And this says referential action restrict. What this means is if we delete a user, then we do not also delete the photos. 
And again, that's not quite the behavior we're looking for. If we were to allow user deletion, and we're not covering that in this application, but if we were, then we would also want that user's photos to go along when we delete a user. Otherwise, these photos would be orphaned in our database. So what we need to do is, well, we've got two options here. We can either manually configure the entity or we can use entity framework conventions to get it to behave how we want it to behave. And what we'll do for now is we'll stick with conventions. And what we want to do is remove this migration. It's not what we're looking for. And what we can use is .NET EF migrations remove, and this is going to delete that migration it created. And we have success. And that file has now been deleted. So how do we use conventions to handle this then? Well, what we need to do, if we want to enable cascade delete and make sure our app user property in that table cannot be null, then we need to do what's called fully defining the relationship. And to fully define a relationship, we need to go to our photo entity and tell it about our app user class. We'll add a property for the app user and just call it app user. And we also need to add another property as an int for the app user ID. And this is what's known as fully defining the relationship between our app user, where we've got one user with many photos. And then we've got the other side of relationship where we define the app user inside the photo entity. So let's go ahead and create a new migration. We've deleted our last migration. So let's just go up and repeat the previous command to add the extended user identity migration. And that's gone ahead and worked. So let's open up the migration that's just been created and take a look at the differences. So we'll skip past all of the add column methods. And there's two differences inside here. We're still creating our photos table, but notice the app user is now no longer nullable it's set to false. That means we can't have a photo in our database that isn't related to an app user. They have to go hand in hand now. And because of that, we've also got the on delete telling us that it's now going to cascade. If we delete a user, then we delete all of the related photos for that user as well. And this is really what we're looking for for this. So now we have our database. What we can do is we can go ahead and say .NET EF update database and press return. And I've got the database wrong and update the wrong way around. It's .NET EF database update and press return. <laughs> and that should be successful. And notice what we've done here. We've altered our table and we've created a table inside there as well with all of the configuration that we saw. So if we go and take a look and let's just make sure physically we can see the tables inside there. So I'm just going to open up the SQLite extension once again, choose the database, go to my Solution Explorer, expand SQLite. We can see we've got our photos table there and we've also got our users table with all the extended properties. Now what we're going to do next is populate these tables with some seed data. So we're going to take a look at how we can do that in our application next.